That's Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. And it reads, <clears throat> Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So this is Romans chapter 15, verse 13. <clears throat> and what it says is, that may the God, right, God himself, of hope fill you with thoughts. So remember, when we do enter in, it's more interactive versus just a one-way preaching, okay? So what does it mean to have a God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and so that you may abound in the power of the Holy Spirit? Any thoughts? On opening, yeah. Any thoughts? Where's all my Bible scholars, even online? Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say, you know, to a lot of God, um, you know, the God of hope to fill you with hope so that you could, you know, you could be a blessing to others. Like it was um, like something you said, you, you know, you can't, you know, you can't give something, you know, God has to you know, bless you, but you can't bless, you can't bless other people if you're not, your cup isn't filled yourself. So Amen. you gotta let him. Okay. That's good. I like that. Any other thoughts? Is this a deep scripture or just a simple scripture? So it's may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean? Well, being filled with the Holy Spirit is what actually helps us abound in hope. So if we're feeling hopeless or helpless, then chances are maybe there's a little drainage, you know, of the presence of God in our lives. We can be filled more mm -hmm. with his presence um, when we're, you know, when we're filled more with his presence, we will also be filled more with hope. Amen. All right, so that's it. That's more the the, the more uh, mainline interpretation of that particular scripture, <clears throat> because it's talking about one person being the source and the other person being the recipient, you know. And then the recipient can't abound in hope unless he's tapping into the right source for it, right? So I think what I'm getting a consensus of overall in the world and in just in our ministry is that there's a lack of hope, right? There's just a lack of joy. There's a lack of peace. There's a lack of like things are okay and that we can all just be happy. It's like, I think we have the, the thought of, I want to be happy, but I don't know if I can be, or I don't know if it's okay to be happy right now. Or it's like, there's so many other things that might come to ruin it. So I might as well just be ready and protect myself. And I'm kind of getting that sense just in general is that a lot of people are just kind of closing themselves off to a form of protection, but that joy and that hope and that, you know, that goodness is not really flowing because we're all kind of in a survival type of mentality and but what what is encouraging is that those that tend to be on the extreme version us uh, or side of hope they're still flickering right but those that don't tend to we move, all get in touch <laughs> right? yeah and and the reality is, is that sometimes we need those that are still on fire to help the others stay on fire all right and that's just the reality of it right now is that those that have the overflow those that are moving you know strongly in the spirit even those like who's been through so many trials and their resilience is higher than the average believer like we need to tap into their strength so we could keep going right like it's like going on a long journey and everybody's like oh can we just turn around like i give up i quit i'm tired but then you have those that come alongside and rally you and say no you can make it keep going don't quit like it's, it's worth it let's just keep going the same direction don't turn around don't go to the side don't make any deviations right and we have to stay on that course if we're all going to make it together, okay? So that's kind of what we're going to be discussing a little bit today. But the topic of the message is actually called Holy Spirit Inspired. But it's called Holy Spirit Inspired with a question mark. Okay? So I want you guys to kind of think about that and think about your own life and think about the lives of others around you. Are they just inspired? Right? Right? because of certain things? 
Are you just inspired or are you Holy Spirit inspired? Okay, and what you'll learn and what you'll see is the difference in the long haul, but we have to really discern if we're just inspired by some things or if we're actually inspired by God. Okay, and just to introduce it is when we think about just being inspired or something um, or something that really gets our gears turning, right? So I want you guys to tell me what are some things if you just like scream them out or just at random, what are some things that inspires you? Music. Okay, Jeannie said music. Worshiping. Okay, worshiping. Love. Love. Like that. Okay. Anything else? Walking. So Walking. activity. Yeah. Like okay. Activity. Being outside. Okay. Yeah, Nara said nature. being outside. Yeah. Yes. What else? What else inspires you just naturally or just in general? Okay. Yeah. Dancing with Jesus. Good weather. Nobody said food. That inspires me. Oh my goodness, Ren. <laughs> <laughs> anything else definitely good weather definitely good weather i agree okay well we have a lot of bunch of nature people in here okay yeah, yeah. so good weather so like being outside so living in new york will make you depressed but living in florida will inspire <laughs> you <laughs> okay so no there's good. good weather in new york springtime <clears throat> yeah. and fall i know and i want you guys to really understand just like inspiration depending on where it's derived from um can either be limited temporal or it could be long term Okay, so when you guys said some different things, if you are inspired by that, if that changes, do you lose inspiration? Shh. So what's your thoughts on that? So you guys name some things that came to your heart and mind that it actually inspires you. But if you lose those things, do you lose inspiration? Yeah, and it shouldn't be that way because I know that it's a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> The weather can definitely sometimes affect your mood. <laughs> yeah. Living okay, in New ahead. England. Yeah, I hear that. Will? Go ahead, Will. Yeah, I would definitely say um, if you put your hope and faith in, you know, something that's not, you know, you know, the, the God, you know, mm -hmm. it's like the, the tree low pigs or, or two of the tree low pigs. They put their hope and faith in what the... Um, the straw and the the sand or whatever like they put their faith in the thing and then when the wolf came and knocked it down but if you put built your stuff your something on solid you know on the on the rock or in the bricks like in the story you know when mm -hmm. the tough time comes you will be able to weather the storm Amen. yes will you better use a nursery <laughs> rhyme to preach to us <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> that's good i'm about to make you the sunday school teacher come on <laughs> All right. And that's what I'm saying is that <clears throat> there are some things that do light us up, right? If we're being real, if we're being honest, we, there are other things outside of God that do light us up, right? But we have to watch the things that really do inspire us and watch our inspiration tank, so to speak, in terms of how we're moving or how we're living, right? And then there's also probably some things or for some people that worldly things or fleshly desires also light them up. True. Like right. So if you think back to before you were saved, right, the concept of the club or the concept of whatever, like, you know, substance or different things. Right. You know, all those things tend to be what inspired you. Yeah. So it's like the weekend was like the thing, but it wasn't because of Jesus. Right. The weekend was the thing because of all the wildness and the form of concept of thinking that you're going to be inspired. You're going to have joy. You're going to have fun. Right. And we have to be careful because. In terms of us maintaining our inspiration we have to watch where it's coming from that's okay good. and that's what's important you know and the issue i think is that sometimes people they encounter things that really excite them or invigorate them but they have nothing to do with jesus right they have nothing to really do with god and when people look to maintain their level of joy and peace and um inspiration um without the quotient of god within it then it can never really last Right. So it can never really last. It can never be really be long term. It can never be sustained and it can never truly be real. So it will always be temporal and it always be temporary for a time, you know, and then now we, we live in a world where there's so many other enticements. Right. There's so many other things now to offer. So whether it's just like for some people, their inspiration is Instagram. Right. Like their life is so miserable that Instagram and living through other people's lives is their inspiration. It's their Pinterest. Right. TikTok. So that swipe yeah. is their inspiration because their life is so miserable that they're trying to live vicariously through other people's lives. 
depressing. We have a testimony. One I second. just took her for a walk and coming back there, there was other dog not realizing, okay, forget the dog. Walk one step further to go closer to the house and there comes this big pit bull or whatever it was and I had on the leash and I was like, first of all, I was like, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I was calling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, not this dog. And yeah, she was on the leash, but this dog was not. And they, they just came out there with the, at least the owner was there. And all I could do was to pull her on body. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I was calling everyone for wow. help because like not my business today. That was Amen. like, oh my God. So in essence, she's saying that, you know, God inspired her to protect her dog, you know, <laughs> and basically, <laughs> you know, and that she, you know, uses God as her form or her direct form of inspiration. That's where she tends to go or tap into primarily. OK. And then the other thing is that we sometimes um, <clears throat> some people perceive some people perceive. <laughs> yeah. And then the, I guess I would say the other side of it. Right. Is that so maybe for my mom, for instance, like she would be classified as a Jesus freak, right? <laughs> Definitely. But for some people, they look at your Jesus freakness or being like a form of a spiritual fanatic as like kind of irrelevant or they view it in a sense that it's not real. Like, how could you be that happy? How could you have that much exuberance? How could how could anything that you're telling me be actually true? OK, so we have to understand there's people who tap into Jesus for a time for inspiration, or they go to church on Sunday to be inspired that day. Then there's people who are inspired by worldly things, and that is their form of inspiration. That's what keeps them going, right? And then even for some people, it's their job. That's their inspiration, right? That's what keeps them going. Everything else doesn't matter to them. They work. They feel happy. They don't work. They're even more miserable, okay? But then there are the Christians. There, there's the believers that are Holy Spirit inspired, Right. And that's what we're endeavoring to. And that's what we're really trying to make, like build understanding around is that how do you determine when you're Holy Spirit inspired or when you're not? Any thoughts before we dive in? How do you know if you're Holy Spirit inspired versus not? <clears throat> OK, so she said when you're full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Yeah, I think it just feels different. Like you feel it. I don't know how to explain it, but you feel it in the spirit. Like you feel it in like certain places that that's just right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I, I feel it anyway. Okay. So actually saying that it's just, it's a, it's a practical, real experience. Like it's not that, you know, something that you're guessing or whatever. It's like you, you feel it. Like if you were dry and you stepped into the shower, you know, you're wet. Right. Yeah. So the same thing with God, it's like when you feel his presence, you know, your Holy Spirit, I would say encouraged or inspired. I would say I know I'm Holy Spirit inspired when all hell is breaking loose and my <laughs> world is falling apart, but still I have joy mm. and still I have peace. Okay. Uh, so I know that I'm for sure being carried by the presence of the Lord and inspired by him because in the natural, there's nothing that should make me feel that way. Okay. That's good. So when you're sustained by God outside of the typical circumstance or when you should have went down, but you're still afloat. Right. That's a good way to tell that God is with you or you're being inspired by God. Anyone else? When you're being convicted, for example, my I didn't even know it was my boss, a manager, and he was giving me a compliment and I didn't receive it. And after getting home, it's like the law was convicted and he said that was a compliment. So I had the next day I went back to him and I said, I didn't receive your compliment. I'm sorry because I was convicted by God. Oh, wow. Okay, so God is in connection and communication with you. Any other way you could tell anybody online? Go ahead. There. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I was having trouble. Um, I would just say, I'm in agreement with everyone, just when you have the, the, the fruit, um, mm. so I feel like the fruit in your life is indicative of whether you're or not kind of like what Jeannie was saying if you have joy and peace through those hardships but also you know sh the fruit um in other people like around you like I just feel like you're you're overflowing with his spirit and it's evident like you might even see physical evidence or what have you amen right so 
um, Zara basically took us back to just a core general understanding where it's like the way you discern or decipher if someone has the Holy Spirit or if they're inspired by it, by him, they have the fruit, right? So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all those things can only come forth as we know out of this fleshy shell in nature if it's God's sp spirit or presence, right? So even like Ashley, who's typically always more, you know, joyful and exuberant than the average person, you know, that's not coming from her. You have to be able to say that comes from God, right? Yeah. So what I'm saying, and she's saying like, if you knew what she was going through, it wouldn't even make any sense at all. <laughs> okay. So that's what we're saying. We're like, it has to be. So I think what we're saying, is it's a marker beyond the normal, right? Like it's a marker beyond the normal when God is involved. Okay. <clears throat> now. From the things that you guys mentioned earlier, right? You mentioned other things that inspire you. Are those things wrong to be inspired by? No. Okay. Are they as great as the Holy Spirit? No. Okay. But they're God given. Yeah. And then yeah. what what was it about those things that actually gives inspiration? What was it about the th other things that you mentioned outside of the Holy Spirit that actually gives inspiration? Why are you inspired by that? Why does music, um, you know, like make you happy? Why does, what else did you guys mention? Am I unmuted or no? Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> I don't know why I can't figure this out. We hear you. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying when it comes to being outside and creation, like I think we, you know, we are intended to be outside and not, not be in little cubicles all day. <laughs> like I think that was originally God's plan and intention, obviously, even way back to the garden. and so not from like a native american like weird or new age thing of like right, we're right. getting our our energy from the earth like some people believe in grounding like going barefoot and actually getting energy from the ground but if god is the creator of the universe and he put all these things in place and he made us like us i mean made us like him we are meant to enjoy it and he also wants us to take care of it. But I think it's just in the way that we're created that we are meant to be inspired and it brings glory and worship to him too. Because when we look at a sunset or when we look at the mountains or whatever, it's all meant to bring him glory. So I think even just being outside, it can be a form of worshiping him. Okay. I want to answer your music one. <clears throat> so for me, so there was a time that music inspired me because I was listening to depressing music and I felt depressed. So it would help me to feel like I wasn't alone. But then when I realized that actually listening to depressing music keeps me depressed, um, I, I stopped doing that. And then now listening to music helps lift my spirit because I'm listening to life-giving words. I'm mm -hmm. listening to inspiration. Sometimes I'm listening to the actual words of God. You know, some music actually has biblical words in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how Philippians talks about focus on these things, what's praiseworthy, what's good, what's lovely, what's pure, what's holy. When you listen to things that are good and pure and holy and you know, and, and praise worthy to praise God, then it also lifts your spirit. So to me, that's why I would say music does that, but okay. also melodies, right? So to bring it to Jaja's territory, right? When you listen to chords, um, some chords <laughs> will make you feel sad, you know, like you'll play some things and it'll, it'll really make, it'll, it'll, it'll release and this is all scientific, I'm not talking about new age, but it will release frequencies in the world that will actually do something chemically in your body yeah, to make you mind. feel yeah. sad. Um, there's even music that will make you feel sexual, like, you know, so there's music has a lot of power, really. Um, and then there's chords and music and things that you can play that will lift the spirit and will lift, make your, scientifically will even make you feel better. So, so not death metal, right? Like death metal. Death would, metal. Um, yeah. I think that there's death metal chords that can work too. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's death metal chords that can't. <laughs> okay. Good, right? So we're see that what I'm trying to do is get to the root of inspiration. Okay? Because we sometimes just, you know, we go through things and we just say, whatever, I eat this, I do this, whatever. That makes me inspired. But do you really know the root of it, right? Like, do you know why it inspires you? So sometimes we just take what we like, right? But that doesn't mean that it's the best thing. And sometimes like in long terms, it might not last. So it's like we have to understand the root of the origin of where inspiration comes from. 
and whether it is something that's going to really help lift our spirits long term. Okay, because anything that's just a, a free thrill ride or something that just happens for a short moment, it's finite, right? It's limited. And then what you find yourself in is kind of back in the state that you were before you had that thrill. Right? So it's like you were unhappy, you were uninspired, you were miserable. You had a short moment in time where things kind of elevated, but then they flatline again, right? So you think about some people, coffee is their inspiration, right? And if you've ever been on a coffee, you know, like, like hit, then you know what happens to you afterwards, right? You crash. And then it's like, am I even lower than I was before? Like, great. Like, this sucks. You know, like this wasn't the point of it, right? The point was to take me up higher and lift me, you know? But then you find yourself like totally burnt, right? And that's the trick. So we don't want things that leave us like that. And we don't need false senses of inspiration or temporary things that eventually burn out. Okay. So now, now that we kind of getting a little bit deeper and we're understanding how inspiration tends to work, right? It's either present or not present. And it either is stemming from God or it's stemming from other sources that are not God. Okay. So we're, we're getting, we're getting to where we need to be now. All right. And then <clears throat> with the principle that we said that inspiration does, right? Is that principle or concept of why something inspires you? Is it transferable? Is it renewable? And is it capable of lasting long term? So is, is inspiration transferable? And is inspiration renewable? And can inspiration last forever? Well, God lasts forever. <laughs> He's okay, everlasting. So Mara's getting some more. His word is inspired, you know, which isn't in spirit too. It's like breath, like the breath of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, something you said reminded me of, I know you're talking about inspiration, but the word escape came to mind. In my past, like if I was in a stressful job or whatever like that, I would look for things to help me escape. Okay. So, I feel like that can be a form of inspiration. Like, oh, I'm going to escape by watching a movie or, you know, like mind numbing or, or I need to go on vacation or, any, and, you know, and it's almost like too, there was too much reliance on that, like trying to escape my circumstances instead yeah. of really dealing with them through God. And then after that escape was over, I'd be right back where I left off because to your mm -hmm. point it's temporary it's not lasting you know so I feel like we have to be careful that we're not using things as like an escape mechanism that's great Sarah and that's actually helps us because we're going on a vacation in essence next week and it's like we all kind of like oh we got to go on this vacation that's going to make the rest of the year better and then we come back and we're like oh I got to go to work and then you, all your inspiration that you got just like plummeted, right? So we like, like you said, Sarah, we tend to use things to help us escape. Music can be an escape, right? Eating could be an escape. Anything else, you know, can be a form of an escape, but it's not true inspiration. That's the problem, right? And we really do bank on that sometimes if we're actually honest. We bank on that vacation that, that I've been saving up for. That's going to make my life better. That's going to really change things and all these different stuff. But yeah, you know, or careers, all these different things. We really think that these things are it, you know, and even our passions, right? If we're being honest, sometimes we think our passions would also even just be the thing that keeps us happy. But you do it long enough or you get tired of it or whatever. And then you find yourself like, oh, I got to do this again. Oh, I don't really feel inspired. I'm not feeling it right now. Right. So we go through all these different motions, but yeah, and relationships, right? We also think that that's going to be the inspiration that's going to change our life and everything is just going to be amazing, right? But it's like all these different things are just temporary. They're not long-term. They're not sustainable inspiration. Okay. And what Sarah was leading into, but I'll, I'll, before we get there, is that, so you, did you guys agree that it is transferable inspiration? Okay. I think we saw a demonstration of inspiration being transferred just recently, like in God. And then beyond that, is it renewable? How do you do that? How do you, how is inspiration renewable? So if you go ahead, Will. Yeah, I'd say it's renewable if you go to the source where you, where you first got your inspiration from. Okay. So Will is saying if you actually tap into the source that you know that you constantly get inspiration from, you can be renewed. 
right? So it's like renewing a subscription. It's like renewing something. You keep it going. So that's another way that you can maintain inspiration is that you have to know where the source, where you get it from. Okay, so if you found a well or you found something that replenishes you, that builds you up, that is consistent and constant, as long as that thing is consistent and constant and you can find a way to renew, especially if you run out then and you know it's a long-term source, you can constantly be refreshed even if you lose inspiration. But sometimes we tend to go to things and hope for people and other people to be our inspiration and then they have nothing to give. And then we find ourselves also diminishing because they're diminished and they're not a good source. So just be careful with your inspiration as you go forward that your, your, your source of inspiration is not tempor temporary and that it's not limited to a certain quantity that you can get from something or someone. Do you have something to say? Mike. Mm. Yeah. That's good, right? So it's like even God is telling you, yeah. not that source, this one. Right. You know, and he's like, yeah. you want this one, but it's not going to last or it's not going to like really fix the situation. You got to come to the stronger source or the better source. So that's good. And you need to take, a, take that advice from God, yeah. right? <laughs> he's speaking to you. Yeah. So take that advice from him and see the difference, right? For you, because it's like going to... I don't know, like a little pool of water or a pond versus going to like the ocean or like a waterfall. It's like eventually that's going to run out and you're going to have to go there anyway. So you might as well start with the best source. OK, so that's good. I like that. All right. And then the last part was that we said when you consider inspiration, is is any inspiration out there capable of lasting forever? I'm asking you. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that mm -hmm. no Ashley is saying that God is the kind of the only inspiration that's out there that you can actually go back to and he'll always be there and he'll always supply for you but that sounds different than what you guys said initially, right? And that's why we have to get to this place as believers that what, was, what I heard just now kind of indicated that there's only one source, right? Is that true? Is there only actually one source that is trustworthy in terms of long-term? Because remember, we went through the other ones. You said the other ones work. When I said long-term, consistent inspiration, it seemed like everybody defaulted to God. Is that true? Right? Okay, so I believe we have, <clears throat> yeah, all right, so then basically, like we're indicate, well, we're saying together so far that God is that core place of inspiration that won't run dry, right, and that won't disappoint, or that won't fall flat. Yeah, he'll always, yeah. Okay, perfect. So this is good, right? So now let's make it allow, now let's move on from that place and make an attempt to defining kind of what you guys touched on before, what it means to be Holy Spirit inspired. Okay, so in order to be Holy Spirit inspired, what we gathered and what was said before was that I think my mom said um, that it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so to be Holy Spirit inspired means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It also means being accepting and recepting, receptive to the leading of God. Okay, so in order for you to actually be receptive to the leading of God, that is a form of then therefore being continually inspired, right? Because God could try to inspire you, but you could reject it, right? Or he could tell you, I have this plan for you. I have this way and whatever. And you could just be like, no, 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 I'm good. I don't need that, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go to church. I don't, you know, you don't have to preach to me. So God could be on, like constantly, consistently trying to inspire you, but you could reject that inspiration. Okay, so the first part we said was being filled with the Holy Spirit, right, is how you know your Holy Spirit inspired, receiving or being receptive to being led by God. The other part involves being completely dead to self. So you really can't be fully Holy Spirit inspired if you don't die to yourself. That's the trick. Yeah, it's a process, and that's the core part right there. If you don't die to yourself, you can lack inspiration, and you can find yourself in a place of defeat, 
consistently because you're choosing to look to other things or to like not let go of other things to have true inspiration. Okay. The other two last parts is that um, it includes being divinely inspired or motivated by Jesus. Okay. So being Holy Spirit inspired means that it has to come from God, come from Jesus ultimately, right? Because if it comes from Buddha, right? Or you read some of Buddha's quotes or you read some of Gandhi's quotes and things like that, right? It's never going to be substantial enough, right? Because it's not Holy Spirit inspired and it's not sourced, like we said, directly from the real well. Okay. So that's another important part. And the last one is that it requires and is pr primarily sustained by faith in God's ability. Okay. So when you think about your inspiration, it has nothing to do with your strength. So if you find yourself depleted or you find yourself not having enough joy, you find yourself not being able to stay above water, what happens is that it's not, your faith is not being expressed into God's capacity and God's ability. It's, it's linked to yours or it's linked to something or someone else. Okay, that's very, very key. So if you can gather that, like these are real, like, you know, nuggets for you to take on this journey where we lose inspiration constantly. You know, when the world constantly is bombarding us with depressing stuff, right? So if we're going to be consistent, if we're going to be a river that doesn't run dry to also be life and a life extension to others, we have to be like that thing that doesn't fall apart, right? In a way, but we have to be sourced into the right river, right? So you know what a tributary is? So a tributary is, is basically the, the connecting um, supply of a source to like a river, so if you think about like a waterfall sourcing a river, if that river is not supplied from its tributaries, then it, it cannot maintain life within it. And life does not come forth from it or around it because it's not being sourced. So there's a, cut, a cutting off of the source. Okay, so if we're going to be life givers, we have to be connected to the source and it's not on us, right? It's, we're banking on the waterfall, which is God. So there should be no lack in us because we're a neutral item. We're a neutral vessel. So the problem is, is that sometimes we just don't have enough um, inspiration or enough joy and peace because we're, there's something that's blocking the connection to the tributary, to the, the waterfall. So that's why you have to die to yourself and our selfish ways and desires. But then we really do have to bank on God's supply. So what I'm basically telling you, and I'm giving you like a major secret, like a major Christian secret, like, you know, in God and life is that you don't ever have to be miserable on this side of heaven. You really don't. You don't ever have to look to your problems. You don't ever have to look to your circumstances and ever feel like I don't have enough. Oh, this is not happening. You know, when is this going to happen? If you really are tapped into the source and if you actually are letting it flow through you, you'll never be dry. You'll never be lacking joy. You'll never be lacking peace because it's not sourced from you. It's sourced from someplace else. But if you have access to it, there's no reason why you would never be full of it. Okay. And that's the trick is that most believers and even you know some leaders in ministry don't even tap into that or don't, are not even aware of that. And therefore their life is a constant roller coaster. Right. There's no steadiness and not to say that you're always increasing. Right. God does want us to go from glory to glory, but even just consistency. Right. And I understand that some people do have real mental issues and different things that are like you should go to a, like a psychiatrist or a therapist for right to maybe help that, that type of balance naturally. But when we're talking about spiritual joy and peace that exudes from the presence of God, if you're alive and you have a beating heart and you have a soul, there's no reason why you can't be full of God's goodness and joy. Right. Because you're a vessel that he created to house that. OK. And then those things do come from that place and kind of find its way through every other aspect of your life. Right. So even if you are going through something that's up here, if it's sourced by the spirit of God here, it can flow to that place. Right. Or if you're having a heart problem here, the spirit of God can come in here and then fix this. OK. So we have to understand that there's nothing or even healing. That's how healing works, right? You have a healing and you know something's wrong with your foot. The spirit of God touches you and the healing transfers to you, but he goes to the place that it needs it. Okay. So that's the same thing. So you guys just, we all have to understand that divine Holy Spirit inspiration is never limited for one by God. It will never run out and therefore it will never be quenched. And therefore there's no reason why we should ever be quenched.
Okay, so this is a principle. This is like a, a strong spiritual principle to help you find and maintain inspiration in your life consistently. Like that's why Paul can go on. He says that I have abounded and I have been debased, but in everything I have learned to be content. So it's not about the high mountaintop and it's not about the valley low. It's about consistency, contentment in God. That's stronger. That's more powerful because it's, it's never lacking and it's never on a, a frequency that's like, you know, erratic. So you're solid, you're stable, you're consistent, and you always have joy, you always have peace, and you always have hope, which is where we started, right? That hope comes from that place of consistent inspiration, okay? So there's no lack, okay? So we have to kind of like, we have to anchor ourselves in that, and we have to make sure that if we ever do find ourselves in a depressed state, that means we have to look internally because nothing's wrong with the source, right? Nothing's wrong with the source. Right. So if I was to go outside and turn on the source of the faucet right there and I know that there's going to be water because the city is supplying water right consistently. But if I look at the end of my hose and the water is not coming out, is it something wrong with the source or wrong with the hose? Yeah. So somewhere in between our life, right, from that connection point, if we say we're believers to God, we say we're believers to God and we're at that connection point, but there's no life and joy and things coming out the other side. Something in between there is blocking, right? Something in between there is wrong because we're connected to the source. So if we're, say we're Christians and we look around and we're depressed and we're with our head low and, oh, I can't go on no more. When is Jesus going to come back? I can't stand this, blah, 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 all these thing, different things that we all go through at times. Nothing's wrong with going through that, but then staying there. Or having that be our consistent testimony, something's wrong, right? Because there's, there's a deeper issue. There's a deeper root. There's something that's blocking. There's something that's you know, not allowing the goodness of God to flow through us. Okay? And that's why you, you can discern if you're Holy Spirit inspired or not based upon that. Because if you're Holy Spirit inspired, it's going to work. But if you're inspired by other things and you're on that roller coaster, then it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeannie's saying that relationships, right? Relationships tend to put you on that ride. But if you actually, so say you're one component of that relationship, but you're a stable Christian, right? Then the relationship shouldn't be as rocky because one person is consistent. They're strong. They're solid. They're sourcing their hope, their joy, their inspiration from the right place. The other person might try to make everything, make the ship rock, you know, but if you're consistent, then there's no reason why with that person or without that person, you shouldn't be inspired. Period. And then you could bring that to family members. You could bring that to every circumstance. You could bring that to your job, right? If your job drives you crazy, your boss is erratic, he's nuts, whatever the case may be. You can't stand any of your coworkers, but you're consistently sourced, right? Or when people see you and they're wondering why, why are you smiling? Why are you glowing when you come to this miserable place? It's because what I'm sourced in is different than what you might be sourced in. Okay? And that's, that's tricky because some people don't want to believe that or some people want to say, no, that's impossible. You know, you can't live on this side of life and be happy. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and that's the truth is that God wants us to experience heaven here before we get there. Right? If not, then he probably would have came sooner. But right now, he's, he was presently here with us a little while ago, even more, and still here with us presently. But... In that regard, it's like if we're continually sourced by him, then we won't lack nothing. Go ahead. I feel like you can find that out in the worst of the circumstances, though. It's like you go to war, you know, and in that mm -hmm. war, you're going to find out what you're made of, you yep. know, and you're going to I, I know that I've been through some of, I think the worst things that any human could ever possibly go through literally. But it's like in those moments, I kept hearing God say like, I'm with you. I am with you. I am with you. And people are like, you're going through what you're going through. Like, how can you even smile? And it's like, yeah. because like, I'm literally hearing from God being like, you might be going through things that even my son went through, mm. you know, but it's making, it's refining you, That's you know, crazy. and yeah. you're going to come out of this stronger and better. Yeah, and you look you know? so bright today. So I'm like, that shows that God right. is with you yeah. of a truth. And it's like, 
he doesn't he doesn't let up for his own children right so right. he's like he's constantly fighting like in that war with you yeah until he knows that you feel like you've come to solid ground or you got free right and you guys help a lot with that just even just like the worship and just feeling the holy spirit and your prayers and mm -hmm. just everything so thank you so amen much. and that's Appreciate what we're supposed it. to be to each other right so we're going to see yeah. further in the scripture like our job and our responsibility to keep the inspiration going Right, like some people laugh at Christians because they used to have what Christians used to be known for their love feasts, right? And their love feast was just like a bunch of crazy people that were always happy, go lucky, and eating food and cheery and just smiling all the time, like hippies. Like Christians and originally, like you know, in the beginning, were like hippies. They might as well have been spiritual hippies because everybody look at them like they're either high or they're on something, right? And that's the truth because they are on something. They're on the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's divine inspiration. That's unlimited, you know. Well, they, well, they were going through, obviously, but what was was a defining feature, especially of first century Christians, was that they were so radically different than what the world represented at that time. So even when things were doom and gloom because of all these kind of like dictatorial like style leaders. Right. They were the only people that were like they're laughing and like giggling, you know, and doing things and like having fun and like loving each other and feeding each other and doing all this stuff. Like they're the only people that seem like they still have life in them. OK, and we're supposed to represent that, especially the church of God. Right. We're supposed to be that form of exuberant vessels that kind of um, share God's goodness overall. All right. OK, so let's progress. So now. Um, Let's look at the fact of how to stay Holy Spirit inspired, and then we'll conclude with being inspired by the Holy Spirit is actually a command. That's strange, right? Yeah, we're going to get to that, but literally it is, it's a command. So when you think about, and when I think about believers, I think about disciples, I think about just us as a church at large throughout the world in general, it's tricky because... Some people don't know how to source the power of God to begin with. They don't know how to even get inspired by God. They'll come to church and they'll listen to worship and so forth. And they'll be like, oh, that was great. I feel good. And then they go to IHOP and then they go home and they're like, oh, I'm depressed again. You know, I'm like, oh, what happened? Like that high, you know, diminished. And now I'm back where I started. Right. But then beyond that, there's other Christians who have a source of it and can get it temporarily. So like going to the grocery store. Right. They can get inspired. They can, you know, they, can, they know what to find. They know, they know what song to turn on. They know when to ask Alexa to do something. Right. Or like to play a worship song and then you feel good for a time. And then, oh, you think about the bills and then all of a sudden boom, you're right back down. Well, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to do that? Right. And then there's other Christians who are able to maintain it long enough to a point where they know that they're blessed. But then something really tragic happens. And then they forget that they knew that they were blessed. Right. But the last one and the kind of the stronger believer is the one that knows how to source it, knows how to maintain it, and then knows that it's like a regulation in God that you have to you have to keep it. Because you really are not going to honor God fully if you can't maintain the goodness of his grace and love consistently. It's almost an indication that he's not good enough or that he's not supplying enough for you to stay inspired. So it's like our life is supposed to be the representation of like a garden, right? But how we choose to live it is a, is a display of the source that brings forth the life. So in essence, if our garden looks dry, right? It's almost to say that God didn't give us enough water to water it. And that's not true. You understand? Like, it really is not true that God does not give us enough to keep things fruitful. It's us to I source it. Thought of a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just thought of an analogy while you were talking. Um, um, I don't know if it's because I'm hungry, but <laughs> I was thinking about the refrigerator mm -hmm. and how God, I obviously, in our terms, the food runs out. But let's say the refrigerator was always full, like, we always have to be fed, you know, we can't go too long without food and how God talks about he's the bread, you know, he's also the water, but he's also our bread and how we need to feed and we have to eat on his word and we keep having to go back, you know, eventually it's going to run out. We have to keep eating. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're saying. So I'm saying 
There's no reason for us to be healthy in the spirit because God is our supplier, our provider. Right? And it says that he has given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places that we could lack nothing. But it's like, do we know how to get the food? Are we actually going to the refrigerator? Are we just staying in our room and starving and blaming it on God? Right? So there could be a laziness factor. There can be a lack of ambition. It could be the depression that's also trying to keep you down or the enemy trying to stop you from getting to the source. But that doesn't change the fact that the source is there. It's ready. It's plugged in. It's like, I'm here. Just come get me whenever you can. However you can, come get me. I'm here. Okay? So we have to maintain this. This is a mature perspective. This is not for the baby Christian. It's for them, but it's sometimes it's hard for them to comprehend. Say again. Sure, that's what we're going to try to like go into real quick before we wrap up, right? So this part is how, how to stay Holy Spirit inspired, okay? And these are the initial facts, and sometimes they're hard truths for us to accept and sometimes even to respect if we're going to grow, okay? So some of the instructions, and the instructions are primarily biblical. So I'm not going to tell you that I have some kind of secret, you know, for you to stay inspired that comes from whatever, all my knowledge and experience or anything like that, no. I'm going to give you the scriptures and then you see if you can process and, and chew down on the scripture hard enough for a revelation or for fruit to come forth. Okay, so one of them is that um, in Romans 8, 5 through 8 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so that's one. That's a mental thing, right? If you're in the carnal mind and if you're not in the spirit and you pursue after fleshly things, you're bringing forth death into your life. But if you're spiritually minded and you seek after those things, you're going to get life and peace. Oh, big difference, right? That's like make a choice. Make up your mind. What do you want? And then go after that, not that. Okay, so that's where God is starting there. Right. And then firstly, after you, you have to desire the spirit of God and you have to seek after the things that the word of God states that actually honors and pleases him. If you don't seek after the things that honor and pleases God, why would you expect anything else to come forth to be good in your life? So that would be a form of disobedience if you don't do that. And without that sincere, consistent attempt at doing this, you're basically setting yourself up for disaster in the spirit. So you know how there's rules and regulations in life and, and there's principles and there's gravity and all this stuff? If you try to go against gravity and you think you can fly, what happens to you? Right? So it's like you think, oh, I can fly and you jump off the Empire State Building and then you're a pancake. Right? That doesn't work. Right? So now I'm telling you there's a spiritual law and there are spiritual principles that are just as serious as that. Okay? So listen to this one. Right? Without a sincere and consistent attempt from the believer, right, to, to basically seek after God, right, and, and to pursue him in that regard, um, basically what will happen is that you will naturally self-deplete. Uh, de so if you're not consciously seeking God, you basically are going backwards. And what happens for most people that don't seek after the presence of God, what happens is that they either end up backsliding, they'll have direct impulses for sin, or they'll fall into the enemy's traps. So that's if, you just, that's if you just try to be a Christian and be neutral and not do anything. You're just like, I believe in God, you know, but then you don't read his word. You don't seek his face. You don't try to go, you don't come to enter in, right? Or things like that. You don't go to church. You don't actually push in. What you're setting yourself up is for like total disaster because you are in a way not moving into a positive ground. You're allowing just the natural forces and weight of things of life just to like destroy you. So that's one thing you can't do, okay? And the other part of it is that in Hebrews 6, it says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and had tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. And here's the, here's the parable that explains it. For the earth drinks the rain, that often comes upon it and bears herbs and fruit useful for those to whom it is cultivated, receiving the blessing from God. But for those that don't, it bears thorns and briars. It is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. Let me break that down. That's basically saying if you receive the Holy Spirit 
And if you walked with God at one time, and then you decided to like turn away from God and not actually live in the presence of God or live in the spirit, what you're doing is you're actually, it's kind of like linked to what we were just talking about. You're setting up yourself to be dry ground and to be like what a thorny bush looks like. Just hard and dry and like stale, you know, and just has spikes on it. So anything that touches that is going to be cut or is just going to be not good, right? But if you drink what God has given you, the rain that often comes upon, right? So today was like a rain shower, right, of God's presence. But the, the rain that often comes upon us, what it does is it bears forth fruit and, you know, and can be cultivated and you're receiving the blessing from God. Okay, so that's another way. It's, it's kind of a warning. Like, and then they said that if, if you don't do that, you're basically setting yourself up to be burned. Because what do you do with things that are old and like leaves and stuff like that? You throw it out, right? So it's like you have a choice. And that sometimes we don't take that serious. We have a choice. Either we stay fruitful, we stay blessed, we stay moist in God's presence, we stay saturated or soaking, or we just allow ourselves to dry up and die. And then the only thing that's good in our life is to be thrown out or to be burned by the fire, like I said. But that, is, as you can tell, is all related to inspiration, right? And are we inspired enough? Are we, are, we, are we able to find ways in God to keep ourselves inspired, okay? So the other part says that Jesus is here to help us. So I don't want you guys to think that this is all just based on our strength or what we do, right? Jesus says he's here to help us. And he says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, right? Take up my yoke because it's easy and it's light. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other terms, it's not hard to be inspired. It's not hard to live this life. It's not hard for things to go in a good way if you are banking on Jesus, if you are coming to him. Right, but if you're going to do it on your own strength, or if you're going to try to make things happen, or if you're going to wait for something to happen from a different source outside of God, then yes, it will be heavy, right, and it will be miserable. But if you're banking on Jesus to be that consistent source of supply of that contentment, that joy, that peace, it can be beautiful. It's easy, but it's a choice, right? Which one do you want? And then sometimes we do get caught up because we have our own complexes where we think. No, that's impossible. It's still not that easy. No, but if you really are sourcing your joy and your peace from God himself, then it can be, right? But you have to get rid of the lies. You have to get rid of the defeated mentality. You have to get rid of the memories that, of bad things that have happened to you, and therefore it's just going to happen again in your mind, right? Go ahead, sure. Yeah, so I was reading the Bible this morning <clears throat> for myself, and the Lord gave me a scripture. or I read a scripture. It was in the message, Transliteration. <laughs> Um, we've heard it tons of times in the, like in its regular translation, but <laughs> Leo's trying to grab the mic. But at the message transliteration, I like the way it said it, and I feel like it, I I felt like the Lord wanted me to read this today, and mm -hmm. I forgot to do it during the worship time. Okay. And then I literally just felt like to read it now. So, all right. Um, so it's Matthew ten twenty nine through thirty nine. You grab me. So what's the pride of a pet canary? Some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to even more than you, to it, it more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you, down to the last detail, even numbering the hairs on your head. So don't be intimidated by all this bully talk. You're worth more than a million canaries. Stand up for me against world opinion, and I'll stand up for you before my Father in heaven. If you turn tail and run, do you think I'll cover for you? Don't think I've come to make life cozy. I've come to cut, make a sharp knife cut between son and father, daughter and mother, bride and mother-in-law, cut through these cozy domestic arrangements and free you for God. Well-meaning family members can be your worst enemies. If you prefer father or mother over me, you don't deserve me. If you prefer son or daughter over me, you don't deserve me. If you don't go all the way with me through thick and thin, you don't deserve me. If your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. Mm. Yeah. This was the tra uh, uh, message transliteration. 
but it, it the, the scripture, other yeah. versions um pretty much say the same. same I just like the way the transliteration, basically somebody's interpretation of it. Matthew 10, 29 through 39. Okay. And that's, but that kind of proves our point, right? That if you think any other source can do it for you, can't. And if you're not going to prioritize the Holy Spirit, that was really what the core part of this message was too, is that we do look to other things for inspiration, but we don't truly, truly, like Jesus said, cut out all the other stuff and really anchor ourselves in the Holy Spirit to be divinely Holy Spirit inspired primarily. And like, that is it. Because we went through all that and you guys said, it's really just God. But do we really tap into God well enough to make it actually occur in our life? Okay, and that's where we have to do. No one's, no one's going to do that for you, right? Jesus says you have to forsake all these things. Like It's, it's on us still, okay? So I'm just going to read the last couple of scriptures and then we'll conclude. But I want you guys to just understand that Jesus is the primary inspiration, but there's inspiration connected to us and the scriptures that show us that if we stay healthily connected to God, we can also be a good supply for each other, okay? So listen to this. In Ephesians and Colossians, there's two passages of scripture that literally kind of say the same thing. So I want you to hear it as you understand that God also tries to use us to inspire an, an iron to sharpen iron. Okay, so it says in Ephesians 5, 15 to 21, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dis dis dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, right? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. That's a lot, right? And what that's saying is that sing, like, use the scripture, use the word of God to encourage each other right? Sing songs to each other. Do anything that it takes to keep you guys inspired from a good source, which is of God, right? Beyond that, it says, make melodies in your heart. You know, that's Jeannie and, and Jaja and you guys playing music and playing worship music together. That's going to boost your spirit. That's going to inspire you. It's God-based and it's God, or, it comes from, the, from a godly origin. So therefore, it's still going to work. It's not just that you just only listen to regular worldly music, but then you go to church to get your inspiration from God. No, you're, you got inspiration within your lives. Spread that around. Okay, that's what it's saying. And then it's saying, um, giving thanks always, right? So being grateful. Jeannie always says the attitude of gratitude goes a long way. Being grateful to God, right? Just so it doesn't come off like the secret. You know, it's really God himself being thankful always to God in the name of the Lord Jesus, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So building unity, building peace. Okay, and then in Colossians, similarly to that, it says, set your minds on things above, not on things of this earth, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Okay, the bond of perfection is love and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of, of God, Christ, dwell in you richly in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another, this is again, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and, and, and to the Father through him. Okay, so there's gratitude integrated. There's sharing of joy. There's sharing of peace, sharing of love, which is the bond of perfection. And that ultimately keeps the inspiration going. So coming to enter in, coming to a church meeting, coming to Bible study, if that spirit is right, if that church is right, it will do that. And, it, and if it's sourced from God, then naturally that inspiration will flow and it will be present and it will be abundant. Okay, and that's the goal. That's what we're aiming for. And that's what's going to keep us afloat, keep us going. Okay. Yeah, and then you also have to press in, like Jeannie said, so that way, you know, you don't lose it or that you miss it. Okay. And then there's scriptures and you guys can read these or we can share them if you need them. But just remember, in, in being Holy Spirit inspired is a big difference than being worldly inspired or earthly or naturally inspired, right? But Paul's encouragement, you know, like I told you before, is that he's learned to abound. Jesus's encouragement is that these things I have spoken to you that in me, you will have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. What does Jesus say? Is Jesus mad? What is wrong with him? How's he gonna tell us in this crazy world to, to what the next line after that is in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus, what are you on? How could you say be of good cheer after you said that there's going to be tribulation and that there's going to be miserable here? 
Holy Spirit, he's on the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit inspired joy, right? There's a lot of scriptures that says when you're persecuted, rejoice. And you're just like, what is going on with this book? Like this book is out of control. Like I'm about to get beat up, rejoice? No, you know, but that's that level of Holy Spirit inspiration that overcomes that. Okay, so you have to step into that. And Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So he's giving us hope. And then it says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Sourced from God, right? Not us. All these things are sourced from God. Your inspiration, your hope, all these things can never be lost and you can never be defeated. You got to know the truth. The truth is what's going to set you free and keep you divinely inspired. Okay, so that's basically it. And then the you know, last scripture just says that if the salt loses its savor, what good is it for then? If a light bulb doesn't light up, what good is it? So that's not to condemn anyone or that's not to say that God is, you know, mean, right? He's saying like, I am the source. I'm the electricity. If you, all you got to do is just turn your light bulb in. You're the light bulb. Just connect. Just connect. I'm not asking you to make light. I'm not asking you to make electricity. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm just asking you to connect to the source and you will light up. It's magic. It's amazing. It's, it's like miraculous. All you got to do is connect and all that love and all that light and all that goodness will chase the darkness and everything will be good. Just stay connected to me. That's Holy Spirit inspiration. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this day, God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, God. And we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would really divinely inspire us, God. Let our tanks never run empty. Let us not be like the five foolish virgins, but to be the five wise virgins, Lord God, that always have oil, always have light, always have life in our tank, God. So we just pray, God, that wherever we're at, that you would fill us to the overflow, that you would inspire us, Lord God, that you would keep us knowing that you are that divine inspiration and that joy and that hope and that peace that we so desperately need. Help us to remove the rocks from our river. Help us to make sure that the water is coming out the other end of our holes, Lord God, as we are securing and making sure that we are connected to you, God, first and foremost, God. So we just pray, God, that you would just touch each and every one of us, God. Keep us divinely inspired. Help us to do our part, Lord God, and to know that you are perfect that you are here for us, that you're near, God, that you answer all of our prayers. So we love you this day, and we give you all the honor and glory for being such a great father and such a great provider. We love you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Have a good day, and stay Holy Spirit-inspired. See you next time. Love you,